Hey, it's Alan Watts RC and this video will be about Raining Chain. So I don't know if I've already told you that, uh, but in Raining Chain, all the content will be created by the players over time. So players can submit their own creation. It can be animation, it can be sprite, it can be a maps, it can be items, it can be monster, boss fight, and even quests. Um, so right now it's not really um, user friendly or pretty much contributor friendly. Um, so what I've been working on the last weeks is creating the software development kit. So it will be a package that contains all you need in order to contribute to the game. Um, all the softwares, if you want to crop image, if you want to I don't know, compress the image, compress sound. If you want to create maps, for example, this sof software will obviously be in the package and pretty much everything that will make your life way easier and at the same time, my life easier. <laughs> um, so in this video, we'll show you roughly what the development um, kit is. Um, it's don't, don't consider this as the actual tutorial on how to use them. In the software development game, there will be tutorial, um, tons of readmes and how to actually contribute. I also plan to start a um, YouTube series on my Raining Chain YouTube channel where I will explain everything in detail. Um, so in this video, I'm just doing an overview of what it will contain. So let's just show you the, the easiest, okay, maybe not the easiest. Uh, not the easy, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But let's just see the, the sprite um, kit. So let's say, for example, that, that you have created this sprite. So you're a good artist and you have managed to draw this, for example. But um, this is a sprite sheet, by the way. So there's all the different frames for every possible position. So you have created this, but now the game engine cannot use this directly. You need to submit another file, which is named code.js that contains the information about how to um, use the file. So this is the code.js for this particular um, stuff. Obviously there's details about what each um, entry I don't know if it's called an entry, but whatever each attribute is. Um, but it's it's not programming, it's just entering data. So the size, the ID, the legs, animations. For example, this particular image have two different animations. There's the walking on the top, and then there's the attacks at the bottom. But once you have created all this, you want to find out if it will actually works before actually submitting your creation. I don't want to get bad submissions. <laughs> Well, bad submission, I mean, not working submission. So in the package, there's a file called um, testing sprite, which is this one. And there you can simply load um, your creation and see how it would look in the actual game. Um, so this is exactly how it would look. Um, so the different animation, you can press S to test them. You can also change the speed. So if your the character is running, you can see if it goes well. You can also change the size. Maybe it's too small. Maybe it's too big. Um, display the HP bar and the legs. So for example, this character, the legs are too high. I would need to move it down. So in the actual legs, I will move it down to like 30. And then I could simply reload. And oh, it looks, well, it doesn't look better. But in the actual game, it would um, work better. The bumper box, it box, I won't cover all the different stuff, but it's a really, really useful stuff um, to have when creating stuff because before you, you had to run the server yourself and add the stuff there and it was very hard to, to test new things. Um, so another example is testing the animations. I have a, a little problem with it. Um, it's not really big. You need to, anyway, anyway, I want <laughs> I'm still working on improving it. Um, so let's just load the image, load the code, and let's say you have created this, you can test, is it too slow, too fast, change the speed, um, change the size, and a lot of fun stuff. And finally, the last one, and probably the most important one, well, um, is the quest. There's another one even more important, but it's, it's still not done. Um, so this is for the map. So let's say that you have created this map. So this is the PVP area for my game. And there's basically two stuff in a map. There's the um, map itself. Well, there's three things. There's the first image. So this is the below player image. This is the above player image. So for example, if the player is right there, 
this will appear above his head. So it, it will feel like he's um, behind the tree. And my computer just lagged. Um, no, it happens sometimes. Give me one sec. Okay, things are fixed. Um, and then after that, there's the collision layer because the, the game engine cannot know if a tree, you can pass through a tree or not. So what you do is just um, place that wherever the player cannot go. I've also added new stuff like the fall. So in my game, you can now fall into a pit and die instantly. And you can also put, um, well, anyway, I won't really cover that right there. <laughs> um, because if I start, yeah, I would, this video will take forever. Um, but that's the collision layer, very easy to adjust. Um, stuff and then there's the zone layer which is the little letters that you can see right there so this will be used when you want to add map event into a map um, so for example a new monster if you want to add spawns and stuff like that you can simply put them wherever you want for example the little a uh, not a e is not really well positioned anymore <laughs> um, but anyway you can simply place that and it's way easier than what it used to be because before you had to manually enter the position with the X and Y. It was really, really annoying. Now you simply say, I want the monster to spawn in the, well, the, the letter needs to be unique, but I want the monster to spawn in the U position. So you know that it spawns there and you have an overall view of what's going on. So very convenient. But once again, after creating all this, you need to convert this file, this, um, tiled file into an actual piece of code that can be used and for that what you use is the code generator for the map so if you go into the creation there's the code generator there's also other stuff because normally if you want to submit a map you need to compress on um, the image you just click and choose the files you also need to crop once again it's just a, a click and boom it's done automatically very convenient um for that you just load um I think it's in map submission. So you have created this map, just load this and boom, you have your, your code already ready with the grid, with all the letters, with the position, basically all the information. You just copy paste that into the code.js file and you you have a map ready to go. It's really, really easy. Um, but let's say, let's just try the map. So you open the map, select the code, select it to image and there you have it you have uh, <laughs> your little player you can move you can change your speed and stuff but it's basically to test if everything works for example the the, the grid is not perfect <laughs> it's not the same collision system than the actual game but it it works fine for testing so for example if you're below the tree you're, you appear below um, and yeah if you can also fall into hole and and die instantly and there's also to make it feel realistic when you're close to a, a edge you will slowly fall into the path um, so yeah it feels more realistic kind of like um, in Zelda <laughs> um, so yeah and you can also change if you want to be a player a bullet the difference is not really big but uh, when you're creating this you can actually specify for example this type of collision will only affect actors while the other one will affect everyone so that's the difference and obviously in the package you also have access to all the, the sprites that i've used to create the map so it's it's not really hard you just copy paste and oh boom i just create a hole and let's create a yeah, I guess you get the point. And this is not a tutorial uh, <laughs> on how to make maps. This would be in another video. Um, it's already nine minutes and I think I will <laughs> make it a little bit shorter. Um, anyway, so this is the, the testing map stuff. And then what I will be doing is creating the last part, which is the quest. So the quest, it's kind of different because for this, um, this, the, this actual file for testing um, the map is only one file, actually. It's just um, drag into the browser and it works instantly. Um, so it's a very light version of, the, of my game. But if you want to use maps, um, if you want to create quests, and it's a lot more complex, you need, to, some, you need to, to run the full server, actually. So you need to download the server, install it into your computer. It, it sounds like super hard to do, but actually it's just 
click on install boom the server is installed and you just click run the server and it, it runs it's it's very <laughs> it's very easy it, it doesn't seem it seems hard but in actually in reality it's um, very easy anyway I'm kind of getting off topic um, so what I wanted to say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So to actually test the quest, you need to run the full server. And there's so many things to talk about when creating quests. Um, let's just show a, a basic example of a quest. So this is the quest for the tutorial in my game. Everything is a, a quest. Um, so for example, the tutorial is a quest. Um, there's ID, name, reward, description, blah, blah, blah. There's variables like yeah, I don't think I will start <laughs> explaining all the different stuff. Um, but long story short, a big, big change that I've done before and after the software development kit is um, separating the quest elements from the actual game. Because before, if you wanted to create a quest and in the quest you need a certain item, for example, the fake staff, you need the fake staff, or, well, this item, in the in your quest and before you needed to go into the actual item database so this is for example a, a how it's called a template for a for a, an item anyway um you needed to go to the actual database of all the items so those are all the items in the game currently and you needed to add your item for the quest here and if you wanted to create a new monster you would need to go in the database for enemies right here and then you would need to actually paste the monster there and it was it's very it's it's not easier but it I mean it was a lot of trouble to go to each of the different files and to in the long run it will be a mess if I did it that way because let's say that I want to change a quest or remove a quest totally then we we'll need to go to each different files and remove each part um, for example, I no longer want the tutorial quest, and I would need to go to this part, remove the item I don't want, and it was a big mess. Same thing, same things goes for pretty much everything. But <laughs> I'm getting off topic. <laughs> um, okay, but anyway, long story short, now you only need one file. You only have one file per quest, and this file contains everything you need in order to create a quest. And if you want to remove the quest, you just remove the file. If you want to edit a quest, you just go to this specific file and you have all the things um, in order to change it. You don't have to go over multiple of them. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it about this video. I've also made a couple changes on the actual game itself, um, but the video is already kind of long. I will end it now. Um, but I will probably make a new video in a week where I will explain all the different change and patch I've done into the game. So thanks again for your interest in my game and see ya!